Welcome back, friends. It's time for a little more whatever after. We are starting chapter five. Chapter five, hide and seek. I never knew I could move so fast. If I was back at school playing tag, the right or the wrong tag, no one would ever catch me. That's the good news about my mad dash with, Zo with Jonah, Zona. <laughs> the bad news is that I have no idea which way is home or where in Smithville we are. I also don't know what's chasing us, but guess what? Our fast running feet may have outrun it because I no longer hear anything behind us. Then again, that may be because my loud huffing and puffing is drowning out all other sounds. A sharp pain stabs my side and I stop. Need water, Jonah pants. Need food, forget Cheetos. I'll eat anything, but no broccoli, please. I lean over and try to catch my breath. I don't know about you, but I have yet to spot a restaurant around here. Just trees, trees, and more trees. Look, Jonah says, dropping his voice. He points at something up ahead. I look and my heart leaps when I see that it's a person, a female adult person. Oh, yay, I call, charging toward her. Hi there. She keeps going, slipping between the trees. Did she not hear? Excuse me, I cry. Wait, hold up. Finally, she turns around. She's old, like grandparent old, but without the hot pink lipstick my Nana wears. And she's wearing a black coat and holding a basket. I wave and smile. She glares and continues walking. How rude. Grown-ups aren't supposed to be rude. My Nana would never be rude. Now what am I supposed to do? Excuse us, Jonah yells. Excuse us, excuse us, excuse us, excuse us, excuse us, excuse us, excuse us. The lady stops in her tracks and turns around again. What? She barks. Yay, Jonah. I guess being persistent can pay off. Do you know where we are? Jonah asks. We're kind of lost, I add. We were in our basement, but then we knocked on our mirror, or rather my silly brother knocked on the mirror, and maybe it's best not to go into the details. Well, anyway, can you help us please? I give her my most charming smile. I elbow Jonah to indicate that he should do the same. She scowls and goes back to walking. My Nana would never ignore two lost kids in a forest, even if they weren't us. She would walk them home, tell them to wear a hat, and bring them chicken soup. What should we do? I ask Jonah. Follow her. I don't think we should, I say. She's mean. I don't think she really wants us to either. Do you have a better idea? He asks. I chew on my bottom lip. Jonah takes that to mean, okay then, follow the mean lady it is. And off he goes. I hesitate, then hurry to catch up. Quietly, I whisper, grabbing his arm to slow him down and stop him from stomping on every branch and twig. Mean lady goes around a tree. We go around the same tree, then hide. She goes straight, we go straight. She goes right, we go right. We are sneaky and follow her wherever she goes. Then even more sneakily, we hide. We follow and hide and follow and hide. I hope she's not lost too, Jonah whispers as he ducks behind a tree. 10 minutes later, she reaches a path. Yay, only I still don't know where we are. Why does Smithville have forests with paths in the middle of nowhere? This place is so weird. First soda instead of pop, and now weird forests. We follow the old lady for another five minutes until we arrive at a house. It's a small house. It's painted white with flowers planted in the front garden, and it's cute and tidy and welcoming. 
My chest feels lighter because mean lady does know where she's going. She's going here. And it's better to follow a mean lady who knows where she's going than no one at all, right? I pulled Jonah behind a tree as mean lady walks up the charming stone footpath. She knocks on the door. Once, twice, no one answers. She knocks again. And finally, the curtain behind one of the windows twitches. That was chapter five. The next chapter is chapter six. I will be back with chapter six, and I hope you are taking care of yourself, and I will see you soon. Bye, friends.